celebration of life for my mom, Vivian O'Neill Clark. Um, she was born on April 3rd, 1935 in Honolulu. Her parents were Du Kyung and Hark San Lee. She was the youngest of 10 siblings and she was the last surviving sibling. As a young girl, she worked at her parents' tailor shop and became a skilled seamstress. She graduated from Roosevelt High School in 1953. After high school, she worked in a radio appliance shop earning less than $150 a month. She met her future husband, Clarence, at the stadium Molodrome in 1956. They spent a lot of time together, bowling and dancing. She married my dad on May 3, 1958. They had a son, Michael. Hey, that would be me. Born on September 17, 1959. And a daughter, Diane, born on October 1st, 1962. They moved to their current home in Keokuka, Kaneohe, she worked as an office clerk at Kailua Intermediate School for over 20 years, retiring in 1990. She danced the hula, played the piano, and the accordion. She also played tennis, golf, and softball. Some of you are on her softball team. She coached Diane in softball for many years and took the Kaneohe Bobby Sox All-Stars to the National Championship Tournament in 1974. She spent a lot of time with her dearest grandchildren, Jody, Jason, and Jensen. Mom had numerous medical challenges over the last five years, and Dad took care of her until she was welcomed into a care home in Kaneohe. My dad visited her, visited her every day, even though he has his own share of health problems. My mom passed away at Castle, Castle Medical Center at 5.22 a.m. on Saturday, June 25. I would like to read some memories from her granddaughter, Joey. Some of my favorite memories were when Grandma and Auntie Diane would take us back to school shopping every year. It was a day I always looked forward to, not just because we got to spend the whole day out at different malls, but because I got to spend that time with Grandma and Auntie, just the girls. I remember there were multiple times when I would pick something up that I thought that I looked that I thought looked really nice or wasn't styled at and she would always give me this look saying, are you really going to wear that? I would just smile and say, yes, Grandma, because I knew how different our fashion tastes were. But she always made sure I got things that we both liked that I always valued that time together. I also remember how much Grandma loved Christmas. She always had cute, fun t-shirts that she would wear, sometimes with matching socks too. Each year, she would have a new decoration displayed in the house, often a cartoon character that played music and dance. And at the Christmas parties, she generously made sure the kids got prizes during the games, even though they didn't win. I'll always remember her thoughtfulness and cheerful spirit. From another grandchild, Jason, I think my favorite memories of Grandma were just about how much she noticed about us and cared about what we were interested in. I was always into puzzles, and so she would always she would constantly buy new puzzles for us to solve together. I loved games, so she would always get new games for us to play. Whatever we were interested in, she would always notice and find the perfect gift to surprise us. Even in the later stage of her life, I always knew she cared. 
She would struggle to remember daily things like what meal she ate or what time it was, but she would without fail remember things about her life, like my marriage with Nana, asking how her arm was feeling after surgery, about our new house in Kapolei. I could tell she was genuine, she always genuinely cared about us more than anyone. From her youngest grandchild, Jensen, my grandma was one of the warmest, kindest women I've ever known. I remember as a child constantly fighting with my brother and sister and often feeling frustrated and down because being the youngest of three, constantly arguing kids, life was a frustrating cycle of getting outmuscled by an older brother and constantly outwitted by an older sister. And even though the madness of three crazy kids constantly fighting over who gets the first pick, first, freshest, juiciest piece of meatloaf at dinner, arguing over who chooses the TV station we're watching for the next half hour, and who gets to have the red pieces in the heated game of sorry. We are about to square up here. I can just remember how Grandma will always remain so calm and patient through all of our bickering. And after losing each petty sibling battle, feeling totally destroyed that somehow Jason had somehow again and unexplainably won his fifth junk and bow battle in a row to get the red pieces. Being able to hear from my grandma that it was okay, that there were more junk and bow opportunities for me, and being able to feel the warmness, calm, and sincerity in her voice that always helped me to somehow feel better that I had to settle the second place finish. And that is something I remember about my grandma every day. It's something that I will continue to use in my life at work, fun, and with my family and friends. That how the ability to connect and communicate with someone through gentleness, sincerity, and love can impact someone in a moment, and even shape the way that person processes the events of their life, and can equip someone with the ability to be able to control create and shape the rest of their life. I thank God that we had a figure in our lives that was so kind, so strong, beautiful, patient, and full of love, and will forever be grateful for her time here. From myself, it seemed like so many unfortunate things would happen to me in my younger years, like swallowing ice cubes, losing my lunch or bus money, soiling my pants in school, or getting hurt playing in the neighborhood, and I always would go home crying to mom. But she would always find a way to comfort me with her patient and soothing demeanor. Mom also cooked incredible meals. My favorites were her cooked soup, baked ribs, sesame chicken, yak pop, and jello cream cheese squares. When we moved into mom and dad's current house in Kaneohe in 1962, I remember that mom would play the piano at their Christmas parties. So it was no surprise that she arranged piano lessons for Diane and me. And I really appreciated that because playing piano and other musical instruments have been very important to me throughout my life. I remember that mom played tennis and golf, and that she took me with her to her tennis and golf lessons. When I was around nine or 10 years old, she signed me up for baseball, basketball, swimming, and playing football. Probably because my weight had ballooned up to 100 pounds. But that was one of the best things for me because I have grown up to love the competitive nature and physical benefits of active sports. I remember that she would drop me off for my practices, was there to watch every game, and supported me even though I was a bench warmer. Thank you for being the best mom, and I love you and I will always miss you. From my sister, Diane. Mom has always been supportive of everything I did. She was the den mother for our Bluebird Campfire Girl troop. She coached my Bobby Sox team, which gave me discipline and 
taught me the importance of working as a team. This is where she learned what a Budweiser pony was. For those who don't know, it's a seven ounce bottle of Budweiser beer. She would have one on the hot days after our games. We had great times as she chaperoned us on our trips to the mainland for national tournaments. And she was a great cook. And I loved baking with her as I grew up. I learned to make my favorite Korean dishes such as Jungjeno, Gongjung, Chijimi, and making Yak Pak with her at New Year's. I remember most of the story, but my uncle Clay always told it best. When I was five years old and my cousin Joanne was four, the Park brothers played cards and Joanne and I played under the table. Uncle Clay would give us small amounts of beer all night long. She and I got so sick that we threw up all night. My uncle was so afraid because he said that he never saw such a pissed off Korean woman in his life. <laughs> to this day, Joanne and I cannot stand the taste of beer. I will miss mom and she will always be in my heart. And from my dad, mom always looked forward to family gatherings on holidays and trips to Las Vegas. The highlights of her life were her children, her grandchildren, and getting three royal flushes on one trip to Las Vegas, not necessarily in that order. Mom was the backbone of the family, making sure that everything was in order. She would, she would be left at home to raise the children for months at a time while I attended numerous officer training courses on the mainland. She had to take the kids everywhere she went because Diane was still very young and she couldn't trust Michael at home by himself. Mom was the love of my life and I'm so happy. Thank you all for coming. 